Hi friends, I hope you're doing well. My name is Kirsten if you are new to my channel. And today I wanted to make a very open, honest video as per usual. But this one is especially open and honest. Uh, because I just wanted to share my journey through life as a human who has to eat food and my at times complicated relationship with food, how I have journeyed through time struggled, struggling with disordered eating patterns. I don't think that I ever had a formal eating disorder, but I definitely showed signs of uh, what would clinically be considered disordered eating and I've struggled with body image issues, uh, being too thin, being in a state where I could have been in better shape for ballet, let's say. Um, I don't think that's really sugarcoating it. I just truly don't think I should call my self, my past self, like too heavy for ballet. I just really wasn't in the best shape of my life and um, I'll get to that part in my story later, but uh, I'll tell you how I got to where I am today and how I think about food today and how all this has added up to equal my health journey and where I'm at now. So let's get started. So I'm 23 now and from what I can remember, I think it was 12 years old when I first became aware of um, the choices I had when choosing what food I wanted to eat, how much I wanted to eat, and how that could dictate the way I looked. So that is also commonly the age, although I'm sure it's younger now, horrifically, that um, especially young girls become very aware of certain stereotypes, ideal body types, and they start to make decisions about how they Here's my cat. <laughs> How they want to look. Um, especially since, like in my experience at that age, I was becoming more aware of caloric density of foods, which are bad foods, which are good foods, what makes you fat, blah, 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 blah. All this started to enter my head. I think around the age of 13 or 14, I decided that I loved ballet so much and I wanted to be a professional dancer. So that's when my eyes started to be open to uh, what I needed to be like, dance like, and look like as an aspiring dancer. And so obviously I had Dance Spirit Magazine and Point Magazine. I think those were the only subscription services I got, but I was always reading dance magazines. I was searching YouTube videos and all this stuff and trying to immerse myself in the world of dance and figure out what it is and what is going on and how can I fit into it. So I distinctly remember being familiarized with uh, the amazing Russian ballet companies and at the time, I was like, oh, clearly those are the best in the world. And I remember watching the videos that are very old now, and I'm sure they're still on YouTube, of um, these girls, these young girls that um, moved to different parts of Russia to go to these very intense ballet schools. And there are videos of them being like called idiots and slapped and hit and yelled at and they're all extremely like emaciated very very thin but i also thought they were extremely beautiful and that is when i thought that's how i need to be so at that point i remember restricting my food intake and I don't even remember really how long this went on for, probably until I was 15 or 16, I think 16. So uh, I went off and on through phases of extreme calorie restriction and then just eating a more normal amount of calories, I'd say, but, or maybe not calories, like a normal amount of food, but it was all like low calorie food, you know? And at that point, I really had no idea how to be healthy. Sorry, as usual, Alice is going to try to get my attention, so she's going to hit my tripod. So this camera might shake a little bit, bear with me. So I had no concept as to how to properly nourish my body. 
um, and how to make it function at its best, especially as a growing young dancer. Um, but I was all consumed with the calorie count on packaged foods. So I was asking my mom, going to the grocery store with her, trying to get um, like low carb, low fat things, anything that said low, low calorie, anything. I was all about it. And in hindsight, I was just eating all like processed crap that were like bread products, crackers, anything, because those were low in calorie, you know. Anyway, so somehow I survived and made it to the height of 5'8". It's a miracle. I was actually probably supposed to be taller than that, um, according to these tests I took as a young child. I was supposed to be like six feet tall. And I'm not saying this time in my life directly made that happen, but anyway, that's a side note. I would not recommend this to anyone. And finally, I think uh, after a little while, my parents definitely caught on to this. They didn't stop me, but they would start asking me questions like, or, or I remember my dad getting angry because I was about to rush off to dance for the evening because my ballet classes were at night, as most kids' classes are, um, like high school or middle school kids. Um, and I just grabbed like a pastry that we had at our house and I picked it up and I was gonna go and my dad was like is that your dinner and I was like yeah and he, he started telling me that's unacceptable blah 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 and I was like what it has 340 calories because I obviously had memorized like all the calorie counts on all the packaging and anyway so they would start saying things like that or my mom approached me a few times saying that I'm too thin but she never like made me do anything she just brought it into my awareness and tried to encourage me out of that mindset that I was not thin enough or blah, blah, blah. I remember she tried to make being having a womanly figure like really uh, enticing, which did not work because any sort of talk, like girl talk, would like actually just made me want to projectile vomit. So I was like, you know, I'm going to keep being my skinny self, blah, 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 you know. Anyway, so I continued down this path of awful eating patterns. I was very, very thin. Every year when I'd have to get a checkup, my doctor would say, tell me that I'm very underweight. If I come in at a lower weight, the next time I get a checkup, she'll put me on booster shakes to gain weight, blah, blah, blah. So that horrified me. And at like 5'7", I was weighing like 108 pounds. It was really not, not, not good. And I had no muscle tone at all. But a lot of teachers would come in and they seemed to think that I had the body type for ballet. Not like, okay, like mind you, I also had really bad turnout at that time and my feet didn't look that good. So other aspects of myself were not that promising, but at least I looked like a dancer, you know? Then I eventually, I think as I started to feel like oh I'm just a skinny person I will always be skinny whatever and I was dancing more and more and more I started to eat a more normal diet or a normal amount of calories so eventually that issue kind of faded out but I remember at its worst when I was like 15 I remember I ate there was one day where I had a cookie and a biscuit and that's all I had that day so that was not good and the reason I'm hesitant to say it was a full-blown eating disorder is because I don't feel at the time that I was showing the symptoms of the full-on mental illness but that was without a doubt disordered eating. <laughs> I never had to be hospitalized for it or anything like that so it didn't get life-threatening by any means but it was not good for me. So as I was saying that that pattern, those habits, eventually just kind of naturally faded out of my life. And I remember, like, I would be so concerned about having a good ballet class or a bad ballet class, and a lot of times what dictated uh, if I had a bad ballet class would be if I felt fat. And mind you, again, I was very underweight, but I would feel like I was bigger than the day before. And I remember getting a lot of migraines which was definitely uh, because of malnutrition. I'm I'm positive of that. It was it was bad. I I would get them 
every two weeks or so and they were just absolutely debilitating just terrible terrible and ever since I've taken care of myself over the last few years I've not had a single migraine once I've been eating the way I should and getting all the nutrients that I need so uh, next phase of the food journey I remember I was 16 no, I was 17 years old and I was at the San Francisco Ballet Summer Program. And I remember having to eat in the cafeteria at the dorms and obviously it was a buffet, it was unlimited. And I was just eating way more than I ever would. It's like I really just threw all my old habits out the window and I was binge eating. I don't think it had anything to do with emotional compensation. It was just there, so I was eating it, and it was fun, and we didn't have anything else to do in the dorms, so we would just sit at dinner for like two hours and keep going back for more food. And I remember my twin sister, Kelsey, and I got into an argument, and I went and I got some more cookies, like two of them, and I came back and I was eating them, and she was like, really? And we start arguing, and then she was like, you're not as thin as you used to be. I will never forget that, ever. And it just tore me to pieces. And I started to see myself, and yeah, I'd gained a little weight. Still, I was very thin, but not like that skeletal figure that I was before. And that just tore me apart. So that is when I started to have body image issues, because I connected myself with looking really bad and I needed to lose weight not just like I was restricting my food to continue to look good it was I needed to lose weight so for a short period of time I was restricting my calories again but this was only for a few months and then I quickly dropped weight again then um, after that summer I went to the Houston Ballet year-round program and that was another phase where I was dancing so much and that is when I had probably the most normal, thoughtless relationship with food ever for like a year and a half. I don't remember ever thinking about what I was eating. I was just eating, it was whatever. I looked good, so I didn't care. And um, yeah, I still had really weird eating habits. Like I would eat normal amounts during the week and kind of like healthy. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know much about nutrition. So I was eating what I thought was good. And then on the weekends, it was like a game. I would literally, I would just be with my best friend Renee and Kelsey and we would like eat until we were nearly sick. It was just what we did because we we're young, living away from home, we could do whatever we wanted. But yeah, anyway, I was still thin, whatever. I didn't have any body, body image issues or any sort of disordered eating for the most part. Because any time that I would binge, it wasn't like an emotionally connected thing. It was just, again, I was eating because I could. So then I went to college after two years at Houston Ballet. And I always identified as a thin person. I remember one girl asking me if I was worried about the freshman 15. And she was like, well, no, you shouldn't be worried about that. You're just a naturally thin person. So I was like, yeah, I'll be fine, whatever. So I go to college and my freshman year, I think I've mentioned this in other videos before, I again went back to eating whatever I wanted. Food was everywhere. I've talked about in other videos how the culture around food in college is super twisted. People basically act like the only way you could have fun is if you're filling your body with disgusting junk food that leads you to very poor health. So I totally bought into that in the college culture, eating pizza whenever, blah, 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 blah. And by the way, I, um, up until I was 18 or 19, I never had any sort of specific diet. I was not restrictive towards anything as long as it was low-ish in calories but I had no idea about like gluten-free diets or this or that diets, low carb, whatever. Uh, I think I thought that paleo diets were healthy because that was like the one diet I'd heard about. So I thought, yeah, I'll go paleo. And I never really did it, but I was just like kind of living by the principles of it when I was 18 or 19. LOL, now I'm like living a mostly vegan lifestyle. So I look upon those days with horror. But anyway, we'll get to that part of the story. So I go to college and I start gaining weight. And this doesn't hit me until I'm like 
three months in. It's around my birthday time and it's in the fall. And that is when I remember seeing a picture of myself and not liking the shape of my thighs. And it horrified me. And all of a sudden I remember I was sitting at, in the cafeteria on my birthday eating dinner. And when I would usually be eating what I wanted, because especially since it was a special day, I went and I got a salad and I just felt sad. Like I gained weight and I am not worthy to eat anymore. I don't look good. That is when the downward spiral began of body image problems. Not disordered eating, but just looking at myself with not a feeling of happiness, I'll say. And I remember being hyper conscious of the way I look in clothes and how I come off in pictures in real life and a leotard, just everything in my day. I just hated how I was always conscious of the way I looked more than ever before, it felt like. And um, so. I felt like by sophomore year, my weight kind of regulated. I wasn't in super awesome shape. I didn't have good, like really good muscle tone. I was just, you know, like normal kind of thin Kirsten as I usually had been, but not really thin. I was just normal. And still I was struggling with body image problems, but I was just living with it. Um, I started to try to be more healthy. I started to learn more about nutrition. Um, by the time I was 19, my sister had had to adopt a gluten-free diet because of a wheat allergy that she discovered that was quite severe and impacting her quality of life. And so when she got off of wheat, it really turned her health around. And so I started to explore the gluten-free diet as well. And um, for years now, I have adopted that as being almost all the way gluten-free, although when I go out to eat sometimes, like it doesn't bother me if there's a little bit, but it's an occasional treat kind of thing. And I do feel better um, and less like inflamed because of it. Like my body's in inflammatory response is less active, especially since wheat allergies do actually run in my family. I just haven't gotten tested yet, but anyway. That's a side note. Um, at this point, I had been, uh, by the time I was in college, following a gluten-free diet. Um, but that was just about the only restriction I had. So let's fast forward to the other big pivotal moment in my food and health journey. I was a senior in college. I had come back from my study abroad in Paris, where I'd been for a month the previous summer. Um, I did spend only three years in college, um, and so after my second year, I went on the study abroad program. And I had done other traveling that summer. Basically, I just enjoyed my life more than I had ever before and ate whatever I wanted. And I came back heavier than I'd ever been in my life. At this point, I probably weighed in. I was, I'm a little over 5'8", and I didn't weigh myself, but I'm sure I was like 140 or something like that. Um, and this is for my body, by the way. I don't like throwing out my weight because I don't want other people to hear this and compare their weight height ratios because lots of different factors have to do with it, especially your um, muscle tone and structure, just the way your body is. It's not all about weight. A lot of it, you should focus more on the way you feel and look rather than how much you weigh. So anyway, I just had to get that out there. But I came back and I knew that I needed to get in better shape, but I wasn't too stressed about it, whatever. I had just been so accustomed to being able to lose weight easily that I was just like, man, a couple weeks, it'll just fall right off, whatever. So I was eating healthy and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I think what I was going through in that change was weighing on me and I wasn't happy with my body. It wasn't all blah, blah, whatever. Um, and instead of just eating healthy to try to lose the weight, I was really trying to lose weight this time um, without restricting myself. I was just trying to be like really strict with my healthy diet, you know, not eating any junk food. But at that time, 
I really encountered a struggle with binge eating. Again, disordered eating came back into my life in a different way. Um, so, I remember at get-togethers with my friends, whatever, food was always a part of it. Like I say, college culture, really not friendly for health. And it was always junk food. And I, at the end of a long week, would hang out with my friends, food would be there, and I didn't realize I was binge eating. I would just look at the food and I just wouldn't be able to stop. I would just keep going back for more until at the end I just didn't feel good and I was wondering why I did that and I was feeling so guilty, but I was having a very emotional reaction to eating because I had been so hard on myself during the week and so not happy with the way I looked, I was eating to comfort myself. But at the same time, I was doing myself more harm. And that is the typical cycle with binge eating. You have a neg negative emotional uh, connection to food and you overdo it and then follow up with feeling super guilty about your and bad about yourself. So that went on for a while. I did lose a little weight. I did start to look more normal, but around the end of the semester or mid semester in the fall of my senior year, I had a meeting with the faculty as happen that happens once or twice a semester. Uh, they, you just kind of have an evaluation, a discussion about how you're doing, whatever. Uh, especially since your professors give you grades, this is a part of that process. So I had a meeting with four or five of my professors and this was the first time in my life that I was ever asked to lose weight or it was suggested that I did. And this was something that was so new to me. Um, I could have taken it super negatively However, though it was hard to hear, it was exactly what I needed to hear because it really helped me to snap out of my habits. To rewind a little bit, uh, the other emotional thing that happened that semester is that I actually came back as a senior being a good dancer and all that, and I was not casted well. And some newer dancers came in and got really good parts and I was in the quarter ballet of this big balancing piece that we did. And that was just so crazy to me. And it was very hard on me. Not because I have a super huge ego, though, I mean, I'm sure everyone does at some point, or at least has a little bit of an ego. When you put that much hard work into what you're doing, you start to get some entitlement issues coming in occasionally. I admit I was going through that. But it was really hard to be casted in the core in the back with freshmen who were new, all this stuff. And some of my closest friends who were in my level were doing the leads. And even younger dancers than me were doing the leads. Um, mind you, I came in my freshman year and got lead roles. And so it was just kind of like this ironic reversal and I felt slapped in the face, I was upset. And I kind of figured out that the casting thing was about my weight. I didn't look that great, so the balancing repetitor came in, probably took one look at me and was like, eh, doesn't look that balancing. Balancing as in long, skinny, all that. Great legs, blah, blah, blah. I didn't look that way at the time. And when I realized my casting was connected to the way I looked, that crushed me. Then I was it was suggested that I lose weight. However, I'm grateful towards my professors because they were not rude or unprofessional about it. They framed it in the way that they would not tell me unless they thought I had potential and they knew my, my potential and my ambition to get into a professional company and they were just very real with me and they said the competition's fierce. You're going to have to look the best you could possibly look. And so there was that. From that moment on, I was so focused. I was gonna be in the best shape of my life. From then on, I had a pretty low calorie diet. It was not, uh, like there were nothing resembling anorexia or anything like that. It was not disordered eating, but I was very driven. And 
I was not eating enough calories. I know that. I remember my energy levels dropped. I would go to bed hungry. I would fight hunger all the time. And I started to lose weight pretty dramatically. By the time I came back for the spring semester, I was casted in a lot more things, got a lot more opportunities, ironically, because I'm sure it's looking a lot better. And by the way, I don't want this to reflect on the University of Utah negatively in any way at all. This does not have to do with that institution. I'm pretty sure this could happen and would happen anywhere just because it's the ballet world. It's not about that uh, university. Just to clear that up. So in the spring semester, I was dancing a lot more and I basically had what I wanted to eat down to a T. I had my diet figured out. I didn't seek any help. However, I did have the support of my amazing friends and they really helped me through that time and helped me with my body image issues and just reconnecting in my relationship with food. I had one dear friend in particular. Hey Michelle, if you're watching this, love you girl. Um, she really helped me as my accountability buddy and uh, was never judgmental and we're really there for each other because she'd also been going through some things with her um, relationship with food. And so I just really had a safe place. I had a community around me and that helped me so much. And basically within a couple months, I realized that I had lost 15 pounds and I was back down to about my Houston ballet weight as like an 18 or 19 year old except now I had muscle, so there was just very little body fat on me. And sure enough, of course, my body image problems just go away because I looked great. That's the, that's the thing I struggle with. I have a hard time understanding, like, if this were to happen to me again, how do I not have body image problems without just losing weight? Like, that's not always the best way to fix it. So... I guess I can't really speak on that right now, giving you guys advice other than just valuing yourselves and seeing that you're more than what you look like. But anyway, the body image problems just went away. And I, although, you know, my negative body image problems went away. I stopped not liking myself. And I would say there were still body image problems because I never changed the way I was eating, even at the point where I'd lost a substantial amount of weight. People were approaching me about it, they were worried about me, or commenting on it, that while there was a change, or whatever, they would say, or, oh, you look great, or, are you okay, do you eat enough? There was a wide variety of reactions here. And I kept saying in my words that yeah, I like the way I look, I'm proud of myself, I'm done losing weight, I don't need to lose weight. I kept saying that, and then I never changed the way I was eating. I never added any calories to stop being in a deficit. I kept going, and then I realized I didn't really see myself as good enough. I just kept going. It was a habit at that point. I was just continuing down that road of like, thinner is better, thinner is better, so the thinner I get, the cooler I'll be, you know, the further I'll get. Until one day in the spring semester, midway through, I was doing company auditions and all that with quite a bit of success. I noticed I was getting attention, I was getting, you know, potential offers, things like that. Um, I wasn't getting cut. And I think a lot of it had to do with the way I looked in addition to the way I danced, obviously, because that matters. Um, and the professor that was the one who really suggested I lost, I, I would, I should lose weight, came up to me very casually, and this is when I thought it was unprofessional. Um, but again, I don't want this to be reflected on the University of Utah. I think it is a fine institution. It this just this one instance could be helped, could have been done better, but there was no malintent. My professor comes up to me after class. And I was near my friends and he kind of looked at me like he wanted to talk so I stood up. But we were just a couple feet away from my group of friends. And he just openly says that I can stop losing weight. And this just shocks me. I remember getting really red in the face and like starting to tear up. 
because he said things like, you know, the faculty has, have been talking about it. And then I thought my body has been center of attention, topic of discussion. This bothered me so much. And I was just very disturbed and taken aback in that, mo that moment because also he kept saying things and he was just so casual about it and nice. He was like, your body looks incredible. You don't need to lose any more weight. Uh, we don't want to be worried about you. Alice is going crazy. And um, he was like, you can go eat a burger tonight. He was just so casual about it. And it wasn't done privately. And it was shocking to me because also when I walked away, I realized it was enough for them, but it, I don't think it was still enough for me, my weight loss. And so that, I knew again, I had to change. I had to reconnect to my normal self and a normal healthy weight in a positive way. So throughout the rest of the semester, I just ate more normally. I was fine. Finished my college career, still looking great with good prospects in dance. And that kind of led me to where I am now, where I haven't had to worry much about my body image or my body at all. Um, I've gotten more in shape. I've started cross training more. And a lot of that is to stay looking good, but also to be strong. Um, it, it is definitely a concern of mine uh, to be always looking my best in the professional setting because this is valued, it is important, and it's a necessary part of being a professional dancer. But now, uh, I've gotten to the place where I'm so connected to food because of my ethics and my understanding of what my body needs and nutrition. And so, um, this video is getting insanely long. I'm gonna have to break it into two parts, I think. <laughs> okay, just to interrupt here, um, this video has gotten so long that I'm breaking it into two parts. So this was the end of part one. Thank you for watching. Uh, please do continue and watch the second part. Uh, if you're interested, it, don't, I mean, do what you want, you know, do what you want. But I'd appreciate it if you watch the second part. Uh, so I will see you then.